So before I begin the debate, I want to talk about something. I'd like to prime you a little bit. So we're going to go back in history a little bit. Oh, you have to tell us who we are. Like what, oh, what audience? So uh, this is a TED Talk. So thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Um, you guys are the general public, or supposed to be the general public. Um, and so let's go back a few hundred years to the year 1616, um, a very, very important time in history. Uh, in the year 1616, there was a little Italian man that went by the name Galileo Galilei. And he did something that uh, no one else had ever thought to do, which was challenge the Catholic Church. Uh, the Catholic Church pretty much put set in stone what they believed in. And so what was believed at the time was something called the geocentric theory. That meant that the universe revolved around the Earth as opposed to the Sun, which is what he proposed. So in 1616, they launched, they launched an investigation against him. And that's him right there. And um, there's a reason why I'm mentioning this. This is a moment in history where there was a preconceived notion that was challenged for the first time, even though it wasn't widely accepted, because it wasn't. It was not accepted. In fact, I think he had to drop school because his proposal was so radical uh, that it almost it embarrassed the university. So now let's transition into what I think is the greatest debate in all of human history, the human cloning debate. Um, and let's talk about what it is first before we dive right into the nitty gritty of it. All right, so what is human cloning? So this is directly off a very credible source. Human cloning often refers to human reproductive cloning to produce a genetic copy of an existing person. Despite decades of speculation, there has been no human reproductive cloning, so it hasn't been done before. Um, research cloning, also known as embryo cloning or therapeutic cloning, is another form of human cloning that produces genetically specific embryonic stem cells. After a series of failures and high-profile false claims of success, the first report of stem cells created from cloned human embryos was published in 2013. So what do we know so far? Uh, with the development of stem cell research, we actually know quite a bit. So I'm going to start with therapeutic cloning and uh, go down the street to our neighbors at Harvard University, Harvard Medical School, where they discovered something called the LAC28 aging. The LAC28 aging was found in amphibians. So amphibians are like uh, cold, uh, cold creatures. Um, so if you were to cut off the appendages of an amphibian, there's this gene called the LAC28 A gene that enables it to reproduce it, it regrows it. Why is this important? Well, there's actually a belief, not a belief, but it's true, uh, that we have an organ in our system right now that is capable of regenerating itself. It's called the liver. So if I were to cut your or sever your liver in half, it, it has a tendency to grow itself back. This means that there's a natural tendency for, as, a, as, a, as a defense mechanism to reproduce. So it's turned off, it's believed to be turned off, and we're trying to turn it back on. That's important. Next, 1996, Dolly the Sheep. Dolly the Sheep, this was huge in 96. Um, I mean, some of us weren't born, but <coughs> Dr. Kindred, I'm sure you remember this. Um, but Dolly the Sheep was so important because this is what basically caused this to hit the headlines. This was an idea of science fiction. This isn't something that people really thought about. Yeah, it was spoken about every now and then, but it became a serious conversation after 96 um, because we're, able, we're capable of cloning a mammal. Problem with Dolly the sheep is its clone died. It died pretty early. The reason why is there's something called telomeres, which is on your DNA, and on a clone, it's actually shorter. And there's no way to lengthen that, at least right now. So what does that mean? If I were to clone Dr. Henry, Dr. Henry's clone would die a lot shorter in terms of, in terms of his lifespan. There's a case study, 2008, Ohio, Ohio, United States. We go to a toy propeller store. There's a man who owns the store and he was playing with a gasoline a airplane. The propeller of the airplane severed the top of his thumb. His brother happened to be a research, uh, researcher. He sent him something called extracellular matrix. It's the extracellular matrix of pig's blood. It's a white dried up powder that he applied to his thumb and in a matter of six months to a year, the man's finger grew back. Disclaimer, there are people in the scientific community that consider this to be a hoax. So I do have to present the facts, although this is, this is accepted by some scientists, there are some scientists that call this a hoax. Um, and so there was an orthopedic surgeon that spoke about this and said, that's not true, that didn't happen or couldn't have happened. So I just have to present to you both sides of what happened there. Um, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip these videos for a minute just because I don't know how much time I'm gonna have. Um, Let's talk about the benefits of cloning. In the top uh, left-hand corner, I have a picture of a few cows. In China, the Chinese are amazing. The Chinese have successfully cloned the cows. 
and there's a reason for this. There's a very, there's a very particular meat that is preferred for profitability, and some people are against this for social causes, but for profitability, there's a particular meat that people find beneficial or, or uh, more preferable. You can actually isolate and, stay, uh, and create a more stable and preferable source of nutrition. So if there's a particular meat, and this doesn't happen just with meat, but let's say there's a particular plant that is rich in nutrients, which is actually an issue that we're seeing in the United States soil compared to European soil. For example, tomatoes in, in Europe versus tomatoes in the United States, if you uh, cultivate them, uh, one is more rich in nutrients naturally than the other. Um, so cloning has many more applications outside of human cloning uh, and its benefits. It's another means of reproduction, particularly to human cloning, because a lot of people are gonna say, well, what's the benefit to human cloning? Why would I want to benefit a human? Well, let's take a look at identical twins. Let's say you're a couple and you want to have a child, right? So you decide, okay, so you go, you go to the doctor, whatever, you say you want to have a child, or you just have a child naturally, but you don't have, Twins. Twins is something that happens naturally. It's a, it's a, it's a probability. It's a case of probability. You don't, you don't plan to have twins. It either happens or doesn't. Um, and so you want to have twins, though. So myself and my mate, we, we, we um, you know, do the course of natural you know, causes, and uh, we have a child. But the child is only in one, right? And we want another one. So in a matter of, let's say, five months, if we have the proper technology, uh, we can use the DNA of my child to reproduce another and have twins, triplets. Whatever you want. Um, and so that's one, one very particular benefit to cloning, um, just for the desire to have another child. Um, and then another is therapeutic cloning. So therapeutic cloning is what people are more in favor of as of right now. Uh, therapeutic cloning reduces the length of uh, transplant plus. So if you're a terminally ill patient that's waiting for an organ, uh, the ability to uh, or, uh, clone an organ is far much more beneficial, at least at this point in time. Um, and my thesis is, the thesis of my research paper was that therapeutic cloning is going to serve as the basis of the foundation to, or a gateway towards societal acceptance of cloning overall. Um, and then we enhanced, and then so another after, after effect of, or of uh, human cloning is that it enhances technologies and knowledge of genetic re-engineering, or genetic engineering. Um, so, I'm gonna be honest with you, because I'm not gonna make it sound lovely and dandy, because again, we don't have uh, solid uh, research on this. And so here's the current problem. So there are some major concerns surrounding um, uh, research cloning and the risks that it posed uh, to the women who would be needed to provide the large number of eggs required. Exaggerated and probably unrealistic claims of personalized therapies. Um, and then another huge staff, because again, this is not widely accepted. And this is why I started off with Galileo. Human, human reproductive cloning is widely opposed overwhelming majorities, typically of 80 to 90% have consistently rejected it and opinion surveys for over 20 years. So this is not accepted. So I'm actually probably one of the very few people that took the more challenging side to support this. Probably uh, because, here's the thing, in order to further research this, we need money. And so to get money, to get grants, uh, you, you have to talk about you know, the benefits and what, what it's going to, how it's going to affect society in the future. And so I think that the, the, the benefits and the after effects are going to have a great uh, social influence on, on, on uh, the human race. Um, and so, yes, AI is pretty cool, artificial intelligence, but I think human cloning is even cooler. Um, so again, I just want to put that there. It's not widely accepted, it is strongly opposed, but again, we have very little knowledge about it, and as, you, as you've seen with my list of few uh, successes over here, oh, where is it? Where, you know, we're piecing this all together. Humans have a natural tendency to regenerate, to live. We have the lactone aging that was discovered with our neighbors down the street at Harvard Medical School, okay? Uh, and then we have the case study in Ohio that happened in 2008, <coughs> uh, where somebody was able, able to um, regenerate their thumb. A simple, less complicated organ, but it's it's signaling something to us. Um, so, what are the issues that arise with cloning? This is the actual debate. What is the controversy? So, um, ethics and morality—that's number one. And so, the question is, can we overcome this? So, I'm going to present to you here are the issues. Of course, there's going to be issues, but can we overcome it? And if the answer is yes, if we can overcome it, then I think it's worth considering funding this, and I think it's also worth considering uh, supporting this. And so the reason why I chose this as a TED talk was because I think we need to educate the general public first, because again, 80 to 90% of people don't support this, right? 
So we need to first generate a general consensus of support, and then we can go to policy makers. Can't go to policy makers if there's not general support for this. Um, so ethics and morality. Honestly, I don't, I don't see why this is a big deal. If we take a look at the closest thing we have to human cloning, which is identical twins, right? That's the closest thing. I'm not saying they're exact or they're um, you know, overlapping absolutely, but it's the closest thing we have that naturally exists um, to human cloning. So ethics and morality, right? We treat it like an identical twin. It's, it's a different organism. It just has similar uh, uh, physiology and, and so forth. Um, and so there is no reason to consider whether we should be treating this like a lab rat or whatnot. It's another human. It gets prescribed the same human rights and so forth. It's just another, it's another citizen of our country uh, and, our, and our globe. Um, and then the issue of telomeres, though, because, again, although, although this isn't widely accepted, it just hasn't been researched enough. We don't know why the telomeres are shortened, every single, uh, shortened after, after every single instance of cloning. So you know, further researching that would enable us to better understand that and uh, increase the longevity of the clones, um, which is quite interesting. Now, how much time do I have left? We've got about two minutes. All right, so I'm going to quickly see if I can show you this video. Because Chinese have cloned monkeys. Um, and as this is loading, disclaimer, there's been 79 attempts before the actual succession of Cloning. Probably not the hit way. Well, the first primates to be cloned using DNA transfer. Yeah. The same technique that was used to study the human 20 years ago. And now scientists plan to create more genetically identical monkeys. And we're talking populations, not just one or two. They say these monkeys will help with future research into human diseases. But campaigners fear the experiments could lead to human cloning. An idea that raises many ethical and moral questions. Activists also claim the tests involve unacceptable levels of animal cruelty. The scientists have even allegedly admitted that their work has resulted in abnormal development and death of many monkeys. Zhong Zhong and Hua Hua were the result of 79 attempts. The cloning process involves transferring cell nucleus DNA to a donated egg that is then prompted to develop into an egg. Sheep, cattle, pigs, cats, mice, and rats have all been cloned with this method, but it's the first time for a monkey. So the question on many people's lips, how long before we see the first human clone? That's the great question. So I just think it's a matter of time, and that's my thesis, that therapeutic cloning is going to lead towards human cloning. And, and it's all pointing in one direction. And to loop it back around, to, to finalize my um, to finalize my presentation, um, there's there's many instances that lead that that's, that lead towards researching this a, being able to understand the mechanism to its entirety, and c there are way too many benefits. Uh, as she said in the video, uh, uh, it's going to help our understanding of human disease, um, and and there's a number of other benefits that, I, as I mentioned earlier in this presentation. Um, and again, in history, we've been uh, we've tried to we've always tried to challenge preconceived notions that have always existed, and um, it's 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 our it's on us to uh, to, to recognize um, when we should be challenging that, and uh, it happens many in many cases in history, and it started all the way in 1616, and we're seeing it again. Thank you. Yes. I have a question, Mr. Uh, I can't remember your last name. Hayes. Yes. Hayes. Um, uh, so, the only real benefit to reproductive cloning of humans that I saw in this talk was so that people could have another kid, which is pretty easy. People have kids all the time. So, I didn't, I didn't see any actual, like, reason to, 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 clone, an to, to clone an entire human other than people who just want another human, in which case I would say, have a baby or adopt or you know whatever. So what what are what are the actual what why would we why would we actually want to reproduce reproduce another entire human? I think so. All these all these subcategories of cloning um, are under the umbrella of human cloning, and so each each subcategory of cloning has its own particular benefit, and as a whole would lead to our ability to clone a human. 
Um, and to clone a human, although that's the one benefit that we see now, I, I would assure you that with the, the advancement of each subcategory of cloning, we would be able to discover a number of benefits that would arise through our research. So I, I'm more in support of the research of it as opposed to, to just seeing the benefits of it and, and pursuing it only because of its benefits. Okay. All right, any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much. First TED Talk I've actually been to. All right.